the Lord. It's time to come into the presence of the Lord in prayer. If we can just rise up on our feet, even as we reference the Lord at this point. Father, we just thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We adore you for this present time. We thank you for how far you have brought us even in this new year. Father, we thank you for your protections through our going out and our coming in, O Lord. Father, we just bless your name, O Lord, for you have been our rock, you have been our shelter, O Lord. Daddy, we thank you, O Lord, from the first day of this week, Monday, up until this time, you have been our shield, O Lord. You have been protecting us, O Lord. Throughout our going out and our coming in, Father, we just acknowledge you, O Lord. It's not by our power, it's not by our mind that we are here today. It's not because we know how to pray very well that we are here today. But just because you favored us and you counted us to be amongst the living today, O Lord. Father, we thank you, O Lord, for we have not been involved in any accident. Father, we thank you for we are not in the hospital at this point. We thank you for we are not in any kind of sick position. Father, we thank you for we are not in pain. Daddy, we thank you, O Lord, for we are healed and happy, O Lord. Father, we just give you praise, O Lord, for our loved ones far and near, O Lord. Daddy, we thank you, Lord, for we have had no cause to mourn over everybody, anybody. Daddy, we thank you, O Lord, for we are not in any position of receiving bad news, O Lord. Daddy, we just bless your name for you have been with us, O Lord. Father, we just worship you for throughout our going, even our going, even as we went to work this week, Daddy, you were with us, O Lord. Daddy, we thank you for even as we did the things we did this week, Daddy, you were with us, O Lord. Father, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you, O Lord, for your spirit that you have given unto us, O Lord, that resides in us, O Lord. We just thank you, O Lord. Father, we just worship you, O Lord Jesus. Father, we just come before you even at this point, O Lord, in any way we might have sinned, O Lord. Father, we just humbly ask for your forgiveness, O Lord. Daddy, we ask, O Lord God, that nothing will stand between us and you tonight, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask, O Lord God, that nothing will stand between us and you, O Lord. Father, we ask, O Lord God, that even as you speak tonight, Lord, we will hear. Father, we ask that even as we pray unto you, O Lord, that you will hear us, O Lord. Father, we ask, O Lord God, that you will speak unto your people, O Lord. That we ask, O Lord, that you will deliver unto your people, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we commit this um, Bible study tonight into your care, O Lord. 
Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that it will not just be Bible study as usual, O oh Lord. Father, we ask that you will visit us anew, O oh Lord, that you will do something new, something different in our lives tonight, O oh Lord. Father, we just ask that your name will be glorified even at this meeting in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up before you everyone here, O oh Lord, those who are looking up unto you for one thing or the other, O oh Lord. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that in this season you will make all things new for us, O oh Lord. Father, that you will give unto your children, O oh Lord. Father, at this point we remember Monique Brown, O oh Lord. She called into the house today specifically asking for prayers. Father, we lift up this young lady before you, O oh Lord. Father, she is overwhelmed at this point. Father, at this point, she's confused. She doesn't know what she's doing. Father, we ask for your peace, O oh Lord. Daddy, we ask that you will settle her mind, O oh Lord. Father, we ask that you will give her peace, O oh Lord, whatever might be troubling her at this point. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you will settle her mind, O oh Lord. Daddy, that even as she is passing through the storm of her life, Daddy, that you will be with her, O oh Lord. Daddy, that you will show yourself unto her. You will give her a sign, O oh Lord, just so she can be at peace, just so she can be at rest. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, concerning what she's looking for her job, Father, we ask that you will provide unto her, O oh Lord. Father, we ask that in one way or the other, O oh Lord, that you will show yourself mighty unto this child, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask, O oh Lord God, that you will do unto her so that she will be able to come and testify to your greatness, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we use her as a point of contact to anyone who is looking up unto to you for one thing or the other may it be jobs may it be financial blessings may it be healing in their bodies in their souls in their minds father we just ask oh lord that whatever it might be oh lord god daddy, that you will show yourself as god and you will turn around their situation for good oh lord in the name of jesus daddy we ask oh lord god that in this season oh lord god opportunities will open unto your people in the name of jesus father we ask oh lord god that even at this in this end times oh lord that you will give us strength oh lord to stand that you will be give us your grace O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you will cause us to just remain firm in you and acknowledge you, O oh Lord. Daddy, we thank you, O oh Lord, God, for the events we have had in the time past. Daddy, we thank you for we know that your blessings are new every day, O oh Lord. Daddy, we thank you, O oh Lord, for we know you are going to do more things even in our midst, O oh Lord, and in the future, O oh Lord. Daddy, we just thank you for we know that you are more than capable of handling every situation in our lives, O oh Lord. Father, we just give you praise, O oh Lord. We give you glory, O oh Lord. Daddy, we ask, O oh Lord, for those who will be bringing the word unto us this night, O oh Lord. Father, we ask that you will speak through them, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that through them you will minister unto the needs of your people, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you will teach us something new, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that even as we are done here, O oh Lord, in preparation to leave, O oh Lord, Father, that we will leave here but not depart from your presence, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Daddy, that your presence will abide with us. Your protection will be sh sure over our lives, in the name of Jesus. Father, we just bless you, O oh Lord. We give you praise and glory forevermore, O oh Lord, for in Jesus' name we pray. Can we just go around and just uh, welcome everyone that is here right now? Thank you so very much for coming around. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank God for this wonderful opportunity to be in His presence. Praise the Lord, everyone. Can we all come in and just have a wonderful time of praise and worship together? The Bible says, we are two or three are gathered in his name. He will be there in their midst. And we just want to thank God for we know he is here tonight. I want you to please focus your attention on the screen. If you're joining us, it's Redemption House. We wanted to stay back, have a wonderful time of fellowship with us this evening. Hallelujah. Please focus on the screen as we worship the Lord together.
changes you are effecting in us. We thank you, Lord, because you have called us to follow you so that our lives might be transformed by the power of your love. Lord, tonight we subject ourselves, we expose our weaknesses, our limitations, our fears, our doubts, our challenges. We expose ourselves unto you tonight for the workings of your power, for, for the work of revival, for the work of regeneration, for the work of transformation. We ask that, Lord, you will reach unto, unto those areas, those areas that we are ashamed of, that we can't even talk about, those limitations we face, our fears and doubts. We pray that by your power, you will reach on unto those areas tonight. I pray that, Lord, you will breathe upon us Holy Spirit as we gather together in your name as your people we we'll pray that you will shine your light upon us and let your name be forever glorified thank you Father for we know you've answered in Jesus name we we'll pray and everybody shouts a big amen. amen I want to welcome you tonight uh, without wasting any time I want us to please give everyone the materials for tonight and we're just going to run as quickly as possible my name is Victor Adedokun. If you are just joining us, this is Redemption House, a place of hope, a place of revival, and a place of redemption. And we just want to thank you so very much for joining our fellowship here tonight. Physically, we are located at 3074 34th Street in Astoria, uh, Long Island City, Queens, New York. Uh, where God is doing amazing things. So we start the series, 48 lesson series tonight. It's going to take us a long time to complete. But this, these are some of the lessons that uh, many people used mightily of God went through, uh, exposed to the power of the Holy Spirit, and, and, and then uh, they began to do amazing things for God. For many people that go to Bible school, these are some of the things some Bible schools offer in the area of um, discipleship, in the area of knowing God, in the area of um, being a worker in God's house. So we're going to start from the foundation tonight. And it's amazing because where we are starting from is where we, everything is going to end. So we're going to go as quickly as we can for each of those materials, please. Uh, if you don't have the small folder you're gonna get one tonight so you keep those materials in your folder you write your name on the folder and you write your name on the materials we don't want to be picking up those materials after the service so we start with the first lesson that is what you have in front of you uh lesson one on eternal life for people that are watching by the grace of god from next week we'll make it available where you can get all these lessons and follow up as we go on and this is compiled by Andrew Womack. Andrew Womack. So the, le the first lesson from the first level, we have three different levels. Three different levels. So the first lesson um, from the first level is eternal life. And I'm going to start reading from you at any time. If you want to contribute, you raise up your hand. Is the Bible study. You want to make this as interactive, as life-transforming, as enriching as possible and there is not a single man that is the custodian of God's knowledge or whatever God is saying so we give opportunity to everyone that want to contribute as we go on to please do so one of the most familiar passages of the scripture is John chapter 3 verse 16 so FTL is nothing but follow the leader and all what we are learning while we are on this side of eternity is to do nothing but to follow Christ the leader is Christ Okay, ultimately the leader is not your pastor, it's not your best friend, it's not a minister, it's not a prophet, it's not the evangelist, it's not a bishop, it's not a canon, it's not the pope. Ultimately, the one that we are supposed to follow is Christ. And God is going to give us leaders according to his own plan, in his own art, who will help us to know him or to follow him. Any leader that wants to stand between us, between you and Christ, is just setting you up for a downfall. And that is why you cannot afford to love your pastor more than you love God. That is one of the abnormalities happening in the body of Christ today. You cannot afford to love your child more than you love God. It is anathema, a cause 
thing to love your husband or your wife more than you love Christ. He comes first. Don't get me wrong and quote me correctly. I'm not saying more than you love ministry because you, you love your family more than ministry because your ministry starts from your family. And according to the biblical standard, if you cannot disciple your family, you don't have the credential to disciple a whole congregation. So we must be careful to get it right. But you cannot love your spouse, your husband, your wife, your children more than God. When you do that, you have an idol. And you know the last time I checked, what God's, God does to idols is to destroy idols. You know, that's why every time, this is, I, I, I can't but stop. I'm just so excited to see this young man tonight. Amen. Amen. What God does anywhere you see idols is to make sure he destroys them totally. You know, so anything we love more than God, fame, money, husband, wife, job, whatever it is, investment, and for many people in this part of the world, our pastor. And that is why there are some believers that will say, okay, I know that's what God is telling me to do, but this is what my pastor said. And as sweet as that sounds, it is evil because then we are idolizing a man. So at the end, at the end of the day, the leader that we are focusing on, as we start the FTL tonight, and some of these lessons some of you are going to teach, I'm going to give you some of the materials to digest them to make sure it has become flesh to you. The LDA is the leader, and that leader is Jesus Christ. Can somebody shout a big amen? So it seems like everybody knows John chapter 3, verse 16. Pretty much everyone knows, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Traditionally, this scripture has been used to teach that Jesus came and died for our sins, so that we could not perish. And that is true. Traditionally, there's nothing wrong with that. But we're going to dip a little bit further. As true as this is, this verse is saying that the real purpose of Jesus' coming to this earth and dying for us was so that we could have everlasting life. So we're going to look at what really does that mean, eternal life, everlasting life. It just so happened that our sins were a barrier that stood between us and this everlasting life. So the main reason, and don't get me wrong, ask any question as we go on, Jesus came to die for us so that we have everlasting life. You know, so when we say he came to die so that we can be forgiven of our sins, it's true in part because the sin becomes an hindrance to everlasting life. But the same reason was for us to have that eternal life. Now when you hear the word, Eternal life, everlasting life. What comes to your mind? Anybody? Anybody? Let's use the mic. Let's, let's be very quick, Sister Diamond, please. Anybody? Raise up your hand. They will give you the mic. Amen. That's the, yeah. Can you say that again? The mic is not on. Okay. Sister Francis said that you will live forever. Okay. Beautiful. Anyone else? What comes to your mind? When you hear that word, everlasting life. It will not end. It There's will not no end. Ending. Everlasting. Praise God. Yes. Hold on. Don't you get the mic. Yes. When I think of that word, I always think that it will, like, it continues in heaven. That it doesn't just stop here. It goes on forever. That's beautiful. It just continues, right? And, and I, I go like, okay, it goes on throughout the whole of eternity. And when that ends, it starts all over again and goes on, you know. So good news, good news. Uh, if you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, you're never going to die. Okay? Uh, you're never going to die. You can sleep, which we call death, on this side of eternity, which is nothing but a transition from this life to the next. But the moment you give your life to Christ, you never die. Okay? Now, the converse is also true. When you refuse to give your life to Christ too, you never die. Because the soul of a man lives forever. So we got to understand that when we're talking about everlasting life, it's not just about the longevity because everyone is going to live forever. The question is now, where are you going to live forever? That's the question. So the, the, the life or the, the, the spirit of a drug addict 
of a, a murderer. Everyone is going to live anyway, forever. So anytime we use the word eternal life, and that word is not broken into pieces in, in uh, Greek, it's one word. It's just for the inadequacy of English language that we used a qualifier to explain what we are talking about. The word in Greek is the word what? Zoe. It's one word. Zoe. Anybody ever heard that word before? Everybody. Even though many of us don't know what it means. You've never heard Zoe before? Really? Okay. Now you're hearing it tonight. Z-O-E. Anybody must have heard that word. It's, it's been thrown around everywhere. Is it Zoe, the life. And, and we always talk about Zoe as what? God's kind of life. So in, in English language, the best way we can explain it is eternal life real life but in greek is one word zoe so another word for life in greek is what bio where we get the word bios logos from which is biology in english life logos means study or word so bios logos simply means study of life okay um can i go on <laughs> zoo logos is the same thing it's the same word where we get zoology from it's just that the kind of life in zoology is different from the, the bios is general, while zoo is referred to as animal, okay? So we can go on and on. But then we look at zoe, which is a totally different kind of life, God's kind of life. So every time we see that word and take it from here tonight, my sister needs a pen. I think everybody will just go and give him like 20 pens. Okay, got, she got one already. Everywhere you see that word from tonight, I want you to begin to take a pause and think that it's not just talking about the longevity of life, but it's talking about the quality of the life. So somewhere in your material, you're going to write it down there. That everlasting life is forever life, but it's talking about quality forever life too. It's talking about a life free of affliction. It's talking about a life that you may have to go through many challenges, but you still live rejoicing. He's talking about a life that is not soaked in fear, but is lived in triumph. And believers got to understand this, that you may be broke, not have any money, but the kind of life you have in God is a life of rejoicing because your victory is not determined by how much you have, it's determined by the person that you know. So every time you see it in the scriptures, in him is life, and the life is what the light of man. Uh, and he has come to give life and give it more abundantly. Uh, and you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And everywhere you see that word, life, life, life. He's talking about the promise of life that is eternal and life that is qualitative. Somebody shout a big amen. Traditional, this scripture has been, okay, we went, it is true that Jesus died for our sins. And it is true that if we believe in Jesus, we will not perish. But there is more to the gospel than that. The real message of gospel is that God wants to give you everlasting life. Can you say after me, God wants to give me everlasting life. Let's shout it out. God has given me everlasting life. Say it like you mean it. God has given me everlasting life. Say after me, I. Put your name there, Victor Adedokun is mine. Let's go together. I, Victor Adedokun. Don't say Victor Adedokun, that's not your name. Put your name there. Let's do it one more time. I, put your name. I have everlasting life. Do it again. I, Victor Adedokun, will live forever. I, Victor Adedokun, have the life that is free of affliction, of oppression, of ailments, of pain, of fear. I have life that is God's kind of life. If you believe it, shout a big amen. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in here. The night before his crucifixion, Jesus was saying, this is life eternal. This is life eternal. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ. That is taken from the book of John, chapter number 17, verse 3. This say that everlasting life is knowing the Father, the only true God, and knowing Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. That is what everlasting life is. Many people think that everlasting life is only living forever, where we started from. Well, every person lives forever. It is a misconception to, to think that when 
A person dies, they cease to exist. The spirit and the soul go back to God. The body decays in the grave. The truth is, every person who has ever lived on the face of the earth, we continue to live in spirit form. Sad news for many, good news for you. Praise the Lord Jesus for that. You know, so to say eternal life is living forever is not the whole truth. It's not far from the truth, but it's not completely the whole truth. Everybody lives forever. This verse makes it clear that eternal life is not given to everyone. Some people would say eternal life is living forever in heaven versus living forever in hell. But eternal life is just what Jesus said, John 17, 3. To know God and Jesus Christ. It is more than an intellectual knowledge. This word know is used in the scriptures when the Bible says Adam knew his wife. The word is yada, to know. It's another one of the words that is used for when we worship, when we know God. We go into, into a worship mood that we become so intimate with him that nothing else matters. Okay? Some, some English word that may be close to that is yoked, but that is, that is still far. To know, connected, seemed together, soon together. You know? Revelation and knowledge. So the word know that we talk about is not talking about intellectual. Oh, do you know Pastor Victor? Oh, yeah, yes, I know Pastor Victor. Uh, he pastors redemption. No, it goes beyond that. It's talking about you, you share part of his life. You, 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 you are aware of everything that goes on in him. Just like the Bible says, and Adam knew his wife, which is the word that is used for sexual relationship, union with his wife. So to know God is intimate personal relationship that you and I can have. Let's read the next paragraph together. Let's go. One, two, go. The real purpose of salvation is not living forever in heaven. As great as that will be, the real purpose of salvation is to have intimacy, a personal relationship with the Lord God. There are multitudes of people who have cried out to God for the forgiveness of their sins, but they have never had intimacy with God as a goal and you just need to stop there and look at the world around us people who have their sins forgiven but no intimate relationship with God people who are scared to have a close relationship with God that is where you hear believers say I believe in God but I don't, I don't, I don't go all the way I don't, but there is, no, there is no demilitarized zone you are either in all the way or you are out all the way people will go like my own faith and religiosity is not to that extent. If it is religiosity, yeah. But if it is relationship with God, it's all or none. So we have a lot of people who, just like, just like who, who, who used that word and said that that person is not far from the kingdom. Was it Jesus? They are just that close. But yet they are afraid to go all the way. To go all the way. That close. That close. So you can have your sins forgiven and you don't have intimate relationship. And guess what? In our world today, countless believers, they just have their sins forgiven. One day they are going to make heaven, but they will discover that they have not lived life to the fullest. God help us. You know, by not explaining the real purpose of salvation, we are doing a disservice to the gospel. When we present salvation as something that just deals with spiritual things, that will only benefit us in the future, in eternity. We are not helping people. There are some people who are living in such a literal hell right now on earth. Many are depressed, living in poverty, dealing with strife and rejection, hurt, and failed marriages. People are just trying to survive day by day. Isn't it amazing that when you ask someone, how are you doing, it's either we're trying to survive or we are managing and none of those words are synonymous with relationship with God. Even when we don't have it all, we possess it, we proclaim it, we say it until it comes to pass. You see, God in his own plan has not made you a manager or someone that is living on survival instinct on the air. The day he made you and I, he told us to have dominion. He placed you in charge. So guess what? 
If there is anything I'm going through right now or that you are going through right now that looks like I'm failing, my, my strength is failing, my health is failing, my faith is being challenged. Guess what? It's only for a short period of time because in you, there is the gene of an overcomer. You, you are born to be victorious. That's why I love the way Paul put it is that we are persecuted, but we are not abandoned. We are struck down, but we are not destroyed. Because the life of Christ is always flowing in us. If Eloah, can you come into the room so that you are fully part of this uh, one body dynamic? The life of God is always flowing in us. So we got to understand that. So anytime I go through a situation that looks like failure, guess what? It's a test. It's an encouragement that I can look at another way to get that same thing done. That I'm going to have another chance. And as long as we are in this flesh, the story is not over. As long as we are in this flesh, we don't have all of the details. That is why when, when anybody comes and they just bastardize anyone and all of that and judge and all of that, I just tell give them a second chance because you don't know all the details. You don't have all the facts. I don't care what you know, you don't have all the facts. Even if you have all the facts, you don't get to make the final call. It's the Lord God that makes the final call. So what we just do is no matter what season we are in right now, as believers, as children of God, we must always remind ourselves of the kind of gene, genetic makeup that we have. Some of the time we're going to, taste, we're going to take some test only once and we pass it. But as long as we are on this side of eternity, there are some times we take some test three four times and for each time that looks like we are failing we're just learning a better way to get it done looking at a better way somebody sent something about the meaning of fail and I loved it when I read it this afternoon something something another way of yeah I forgot it now maybe I'll get the acronym later on so let's, let's be encouraged and then for, for us as believers, we don't understand that when we are saying, oh, this affliction is too much, this trouble is so grave, look at what I've done. There are many other people that have gone through the same situation, they have been victorious, that are going through the same situation that will be victorious. So guess what? Anything that happened to you and I is common. Not, not my word, the words of the scriptures. It's common because we have what it takes to overcome such situations. Somebody shout praise the Lord. So by making salvation something that deals only with the future, many people put off that decision because they are too busy just trying to survive today. And I'm sorry because many of us preachers, we don't explain to people. So we go like, okay, then you'll be happy, then you'll be this. And people go like, okay, I, I'm so busy today, I'll, talk, I'll think about that tomorrow. And so people actually say, when I'm on my dying bed, so bold, only if Everyone knows that from that moment that you surrender your life to Christ, you start enjoying real life. And if we as believers, we represent heaven well and we let people know, you may not have the key to Maybach $650,000 or $700,000 car in your pocket, but you have sound mind. You know what is going to happen tomorrow because you know the one that knows tomorrow. You have the hope and the victory over sin. So you may not have what looks like the worldly good. But what is better than the worldly good you possess as a believer. Amazing, wonderful, great, good news. If people know that and if we represent heaven well in that regard. Many will not put off their salvation experience to tomorrow. Let's read the next paragraph together from the truth. Let's go. The truth is that Jesus not only came to affect our eternal destinies so that we can live forever in heaven in blessing instead of the punishment and cure of hell. Shout it out, next line. But Jesus also came to deliver us from this present evil world. Let's look at that. Jesus came to deliver us from this present evil world. As believers, how do we get delivered? From this present evil world. If you want to share an experience, that's fine. 
But I don't want us to just talk theoretical things. You know, some of the time we make the gospel so theoretical, we forget that we are still alive on this earth. We are at the end of the month. We are figuring out to pay the bills. Where somebody walks by on the subway and look at you and give you the look, though you never knew them, like the ground should just open up and swallow up and where you go for an interview and then you are just believing God for a miracle, this present world, where you preach the best message of your life and everyone is looking whether you are done or they are checking their time after 10 minutes. Not now. I know I'm preaching good now. You understand what I'm saying? Where you go over and over again, you pray and God gives you a word that I'm the Lord that I've healed you. And then you keep going to the doctor every day because the pain, the suffering, the agony is more than you can bear present world, real world, where you can hold on for one promise for a whole year and everyone condemns you because they think you don't have it because you don't have enough faith. That's what happens in the real world. It doesn't matter how much, how many minutes you spend here at Redemption House, we're going to step out and go to the real world. And some of the time we don't need to go far because some of the time even we brethren we start ridiculing one another from inside the service. Somebody's always trying to show off how more spiritual they are than anyone else. God forbid it doesn't happen here. <laughs> but I'm just letting us know that is the reality of the world that we live in, full of darkness and evil. That some of the time when people give you a hug, you check, you check over and over again their intention. I'm not asking you to be suspicious, but that's the world that we live in. So how do we get delivered? Some people will say, okay, don't just, just, just dissociate yourself. I, I, the last time I checked, that doesn't work. <laughs> you know? Talk to me, anybody. Get the mic and speak to me. I know we have preachers in the house. How? The deliverance comes from the word and applying it to your life. It doesn't come uh, easily. We are delivered da daily. Thank you. We're delivered, but we go from deliverance to deliverance. But at every point in our deliverance, we have to fight through with the Lord on our side. This is a process. It's not something that happens immediately for all of us because we're growing. We're growing in the knowledge of the word. We're growing in the knowledge of how God operates in our lives, how God operates in his church, how God operates in the world. There are two kingdoms, mm. the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. We are, the king, we are from the kingdom of God. And when Christ came and he set foot here, the kingdom of God had arrived in the presence of God himself to deliver us to open our eyes, to show us the truth. The truth only comes by the application of the world to our daily circumstances and experiences. That's how we grow. Mm. And our deliverance for everyone, we're, we're babies. We're babies in the word. Then we have to go from the milk to the meat. Most of our churches are still feeding milk. Mm. We need to grow up. Mm. And if we don't, we will suffer more mm. from our ignorance than anything else. It's, again, the word. Even in the last days when there are signs and wonders in the heavens and the, in the skies, we still hold the word. The word and the word. That's how it is. That's the only thing that will sustain us. Mm. And uh, we, we might be, we're dying every moment. But, we're, we're li <laughs> but our, our physical bodies are dying. Mm -hmm. But our spirits yep. are growing and growing and right. growing. So that when our whole body is permeated with the word of God, then the translation can take place. Praise God. Praise and God. even Paul, Paul, one of the greatest apostles of one of the most brilliant, brilliant men that God ever created, he used that man, mm. and that man suffered more than anyone. Mm. And yet he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Amen. And that's the example. And he followed Christ in every way. And he said, don't follow me. Mm. Follow Christ. Mm -hmm. Follow me as, as I, I follow, follow Christ. Christ. Mm. That's what needs to be done. Amen. That's, 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 that's interesting. I, I just wanted to hold on to that word, process. Process. And, and as believers, we've got to be careful because some of the time we come for one service and we think 
we have gotten everything that we need for the rest of the year. And it doesn't happen that way. As a matter of fact, there are some things I'm telling you now that it wouldn't become useful until four years' time. But at least you have that. You have that. Some believers, we have just one vision, one revelation. One vision, one revelation, and they will not come to church again. Because an angel appeared. And some of the time, it's a demon that just took off the form of an angel. You know? So we got to understand the best, and I've preached about this too many times, but you can't over preach about it. The best we can have is that, the word of God. Every other thing will fail, will fall. You know? And it doesn't matter how we are trying to build our own empires because unfortunately, many of, our, many of us pastors have not made it easy because everyone is trying to get their own disciple, their own loyal followers, their own uh, members of the elite, their own and, and, and we make it difficult for people to get their source of living from the word of God. Some of the time, one of the things that, that surprises me is probably people see our ad, our Facebook page, uh, the, the website, or just get a tract, or they're looking for church and they search Google, and they ask the question, are you a Bible-believing church? I just go like, my God. See how bad the church has become. And people ask, <laughs> if I'm going to take the census, a high percentage. Are you a Bible-believing church? What else are we going to believe if we are a church? What else? Whatever the Pope says, is a man. Is a man. And every now and then you get, come volunteer. We, by the grace of God, from next week, we want to encourage people to come and volunteer in the office because we're having many calls. Our operations have been doubled up already, so we're going to need lots of, lots of volunteers. And, and you just stay still and, like, really? Are you a Bible believing church? The Lord is going to help us. Many things are happening in the body of Christ. Some of the time, even we, the body, we don't know how we got to be. So much messed up. So much messed up, unfortunately. The other day, uh, while, in, while in Christ's life, we went out for evangelism and by Fulton Park, I saw a man st sitting by himself. So I asked him if I can come and sit with him. He said yes. And I said, if I can share the gospel, how are you doing? We are just out here in the neighborhood sharing the love of Christ. I want to tell you about Christ. And he let me go and he was just looking at me like you are looking at me right now. And he asked me a simple question. How can I go back to the church? Have you been in the church before? Oh yeah, I've been in the church before. My wife is an ordained minister in church. Well, maybe me, he or was or whichever then. So, so what happened? My wife left me and went with the pastor of the church. So how do you expect me to go back to the church? I don't know what I could preach. I just have to be a human being and let him know. If I'm in your shoes, I don't know how I'm going to handle it. But that was your wife. That was the pastor. Your example is Jesus. He's faultless. That was the one that died for you. And I'm, I don't mean to be rude or judgmental, but at the end of the day, the best a human being can be is to keep being a human being. That's the best we can be. And he was so distraught. He was so disappointed. He said, where am I going to start from? Where am I going to start from? Do you want me to start telling him, and Abraham did this, and Isaac sold, and in that land he did this, and then Jacob went by the ladder, and he was seeing heaven and angels. What sense would that make to him? Or I start telling him about Bart Bartholomew and James and John. But this is a guy that, You know, so that's why at the end of the day, it all, it all stops here. Some Bible commentators said, when the Bible says, and books were opened. Some people believe they are the books that have the name of people that will make it to heaven. But some people believe they are the books of the scriptures. Because everyone will be judged by what is written in this book. At the end of the day, God is not going to judge you based on Pastor Victor. Pastor Victor has a lane. 
And God help me, I'm trying to keep to mine. So honey, try and keep to yours. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. In our days, people will say, I'm a better believer if I don't go to a church locally. And we got to call upon God to bring a revival in our days that will destroy all this scheme of the enemy. Some people believe they are better believers if they don't show up in church. Go ahead, man. I always uh, go back to when Jesus was um, at the Last Supper Mm. and um, he was going to wash the disciples' feet. And um, now these men, these 12 men, had been with him 24-7 for three years straight. They were washed by the word, mm. by s- listening to, his, to him speak, because he, he is the living word of God. Mm. I mean, Jesus is the word. When we follow the Bible, we're following Jesus. Jesus man. is the word made flesh. Yes, ma'am. And he wants us to become the words made flesh, okay? Now, when Jesus went to uh, wash Peter's feet, you know, Peter said, no, 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 you can't do that, Lord. And he said, well, if you don't let me do it, you know, you don't have any part in me. Mm. And one of the things I took away from that was that we are cleansed by the word as we, as we read it and as we live it at, at thr- through our experiences. Uh, but even so, because we're human, Every day our feet are dirty. Mm. We have to wash our feet. Mm. And we wash our feet by self-examination. Lord, what have I done today? Oh, God, you know, I thought that terrible thing about that person, or I said that terrible thing, or I did this. Lord, please forgive me and help me to do better. So even though we're washed by the word, we still have to wash our feet every day. Mm. Mm. And then keep ourselves cleansed every day self-examination so that's how it works and that's why jesus said if you don't let me wash your feet peter Mm. you're you're not not humble enough (laughs) yeah you have to let me do this Mm. this is the example amen so i think that 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 just strikes me so much when i see my my lord doing that Mm. in the scriptures Mm. anybody else anyone else so we need a daily wash. Daily wash. Daily wash. You know? Somebody said, he said, uh, don't let the devil, because the devil is a, is a pig, don't let him drag you into the mud. Because when he does that, you are the one that will be stained. But for him, it is fun. Because the pig is comfortable in the mud. To, to him, it's fun. Just playing in the mud, but it's you that will, that will get stained. Over to you, man. I just want to um, sort of go back to where we're coming from, yeah. um, saying something about um, Jesus came to deliver us from this present evil world. We are we are living in the world, but we are not part of the world. Yes, ma'am. I guess you know. Um, no, I guess pretty much. Before we give our life to Christ, we are part of the world. We are living in it. We we follow the dictates. Whatever it's going, whatever it's dictated, that's how we go. But when we give our lives to Jesus, when we come into the eternal life, that's he has given, I mean, he has come to give us. Pretty much at that point, we are only living in this world, but we are not part of it. So, yeah, the evil world is still there, and we are, you know, it's part and parcel of us. That's where we live, we mm. breathe, and what have you. But the dictates of the world, the way things are done, we no longer, you know, com- conform to that. That's, sure. that's his way of delivering us from this present world. We live in it, but the way we live our lives is no longer the concept or the way you know it's done in this evil world so I think amen thank you very much at any point in time if you want something to cheap and let me know yes ma'am and the word says that we we should we should be conformed to the word of god mm-hmm. every day be I- it's a process yes, ma'am. Said, every day as we grow as we learn as we draw closer to god we, we are conformed to the word of God. But that takes our willful obedience to Amen. the word of God because God doesn't do anything without, you know, without our cooperation. Mm. So as we grow, we grow in the word and cooperate with his word. That's how it Amen. works. R- Romans chapter 12, verse 2, be ye not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
and that gets done by the word of God. Very, very important. Amen. Amen. You know, it's amazing because the word constantly tells us believers, you are not part of us. And believers, we keep telling the word, but we are part, we're just managing. Let's be part of you. And the word is saying, no, you are not part of us. You're not part of us. You know, Peter, when he was cursing, even the unbeliever said, you are one of his disciples. And that's what they are telling us. We know you are a believer. We know we are, <laughs> God is going to help us in Jesus' name. Um, yes, the truth is that Jesus not only came to affect our destinies so that we can live forever in heaven, and, and all, but he came to give you intimacy and personal relationship. Jesus came to bring you back into close, underline that, personal relationship with him, into close personal relationship with him. In the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus chapter 19, the Israelites said, we don't want to come close. When they saw the renting of the rocks and the earthquake and all of that, they said, we don't want to come close. But you know, uh, okay, this is, this is the best way to explain it. So he's not really expecting us to come close. He's just expecting us to allow him to come close. Because there may just be fear. So when we are telling you draw nigh to God, what we are telling is he, he wants to come close. Give him the room. Give him the room. That's why I love this analogy. I say, God, I don't just want to hold your hands because some of the time I may be going through fire and I'm tempted to let go. What about you just holding my hand? And when I find it difficult to follow, just drag me. But that's got to be my decision. Because there are some times if I'm the one holding the hands, I just let go. So, but he is the one that wants to come close. And doesn't it surprise us as believers that he's always, always revealing himself to us? The time you would have gone out and the car would have hit your car and you just slowed down in traffic or something slowed you down in the house and you, you do understand what is going on. The time that you wanted to take a vacation and you changed your mind last minute or you just felt like calling the work that you're not coming today. Some strange things that we call it is just God coming close and we should let him listen God should be closer to us than your pastor is he should be closer to you than your spouse is you should have some kind of regimen is that the right word right in your life that no one else can come close this time around it's, it's between me and God it's between me and God in our world today, when somebody said, I hear God, he said, you're crazy. But how can you live without hearing him? The only way to live is to hear him. He said, in him is life. That's the only way to live. But unfortunately, our world has bastardized everything. Call evil good, call good evil. Call light darkness and darkness light. Unfortunately, but we as believers, we are here temporarily to make sure we effect a change. But how can we effect a change on the external? If internally we have not been transformed. That word transformed is the word in Greek metamorpho, which in English we call metamorphosis. Metamorphosis simply means what? Metamorphosis, when you see a lava, it's different totally from a pupa, it's different totally from a butterfly. It's changed. So when you see me yesterday, and I cause, and I holler, and I scream, and I yell, and I hate, and I envy, and I have bitterness. You just have to wait a little bit and subject me to the process. And then you see me tomorrow and I've dropped some of those bad habits. Hold your thoughts. Don't go. Go ahead, girl. Um, I, I um, think what you're saying is right because a lot of people think yeah, that you know, it's you know, all... I think what you're saying is... Yeah, you, what you're saying, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> a lot of people think that knowing God is all about knowing the Bible and reading it and following it religiously. But what they do don't seem to know is that you have to know God on a personal level. You have to let him into your heart for you to really have that close relationship with God. It's not about knowing the Bible because you could know the Bible and not know God truly. Mm. And like you have to open your, up yourself to him because you said that some people are afraid of having that type of relationship with, with God because like they they might feel like it's overwhelming for them mm. like they can be in a situation and they don't know what to do they're scared or they just are not ready for that type of responsibility mm, wow i love that sister francis yes when a caterpillar is in the cocoon and it's changing going through metamorphosis 
if you try to help it out of his cocoon, you it break won't it, survive. You destroy it, yeah. The fight out, the fight out of the cocoon is what mm. strengthens its wings Praise and God. makes it fly. Praise so God. that's something to think about. Yeah. So metamorphosis, you got to do it. You got, there are many things your pastor can holler and preach and scream like TD or talk slowly and gently like some other. But you got to do it. You just got to get home and say, oh, the next one hour, it's me and you, God. Tell me, what is wrong with me? Okay, I'm always angry. I'm always touchy. What is wrong with me? Change me, transform me. Look, I, don't, I know you don't like the way I am right now. I don't even like the way I am right now. So we got to fix it. We got to get it done. And guess what? You're going to do it today. You're going to do it tomorrow. You're going to do it until one day you discover envy is gone. Bitterness is gone. Anger is gone. Until one day you discover you are on fire of the Holy Spirit. And even when that happens... You still keep doing it. Like somebody said, I don't know whether it was a rich dad, poor dad, and said, when you see people that jog and go on exercise and all of that, they are the least people that should be doing that. Most of the time, out of 100 people, when you see people that jog in the morning, about 90-something of them are slim, they are slim, right? They are skinny, they are fit. You know, that's the truth. So you wonder, they, why are they jogging? And then you look at, <laughs> you look at some people in your house, at your job, and he said, he should be jogging. You know, there are sometimes you go to the fast food restaurant and you see the dude or the girl, Audrey, and I say, you too? You Audrey, you know, you too? You should be jogging right now. But then he, he said that what made them that fit is what they have been doing. So what will keep them fit is to continue doing what they have been, they have been doing. And I, I, I'm preaching good tonight. Come on it it's, it's breaks my heart when believers feel, feel I have arrived. So the things that I've been doing before, which for some of us may be evangelism, maybe worship, maybe just helping a friend in need, maybe having a prayer partner, somebody you are committed to praying for. So now, I am, whatever title I have, and when we drop what we have been doing, doing for years, building for years, that had gotten us to where we are. And it's only Christians that do it. Only Christians that do it. So we must come to a place like this, talking about following the leader and just be sincere with ourselves. Let me be honest with you. Many things you're going to hear after giving your life to Christ and you are following Christ 10, 12, 12 years, they're going to be addition. Most of the things you're going to be here is going to be nothing new. Most of them remind us. Even Jesus told the disciples, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will remind you. But then it's your duty to make sure you do it when he reminds you. As I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. What has kept us this far? The discipline, the tenacity that we've been engaged in that has kept us this far has the potential to sustain us and to take us to the next level of breakthrough that we are looking at. So you don't give it up. As a matter of fact, when you look at the scriptures in the book of uh, 1 John, it's talking about art. Art to your faith, virtue. Art to virtue, knowledge. Art to knowledge, temperance. To temperance, self-control. To self-control, what is it? Love. If these things be in you and they abide, they make you so that you are not barren in the knowledge of me. For he that does not have this thing, does not know that he is blind. You see, but when you see it, it's addition. You don't take anything off. You add to what you have got. You add prayer to worship. You add worship to dexterity. You add dexterity to patience. You add patience to giving. You keep adding. That's how we grow as believers, by adding godly, godly virtues to the other godly virtues that we already have. Is that the spelling of revival? Okay, it is. Amen. So Jesus put it this way, John 10.10, 10, the thief, speaking of Satan, come and not before to steal, to kill, to destroy. I am come that they might have life and they, they might have it more abundantly. If you're watching us tonight, we make the material available when you visit our website, uh, maybe two hours after this meeting. I'm going to share some of this material so you can follow us and use the same materials that we are using right now. Right from the homepage, there's going to be a link to materials on follow the leader okay uh god wants to give you and i eternal life god wants to give you abundant life and i believe that we all need that today so let's go the purpose of eternal life 
The purpose of the gospel is eternal life. Okay? B, eternal life is what? Knowing God. C, knowing God means what? Intimate relationship. So you don't know God just based on your definition. It means come all the way. You got to come all the way. And you know what? Eternal life is available when? Now. First John chapter 5, verse 12. And God wants a personal relationship with you. Amen. So let's look at some questions. John 3, 16. What was the purpose of God sending Jesus into the world? Let's fill it in. To give all or to give us eternal life. Let's quickly do that. Let's quickly do that. So write it in. Right there, fill in the blank. To give me, Victor Adedoku, eternal life. That's the purpose. Number two, the biblical usage of the word no means to have an intimate personal relationship with a person. When you see John 17:3 that we read before, okay, to know God, we're going to feel that. What is eternal, everlasting life according to this verse is knowing God. Okay, that's what, that's what the Bible says in John chapter 17, verse number 3. To know God. That is that Jesus was actually the one speaking. When it's in red, you better pay a little bit more attention. This is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Let's go to number 3. When you look at the book of First John chapter 5, I'm opening so that you can quickly write this out as we're going to round off in a couple of minutes from verse 11 to 12 and this is the record that God had given to us eternal life and this life is in his son he that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son of God hath not life so according to these verses when does eternal life or everlasting life begin at conversion the moment you say Jesus it may be when you're about <laughs> having a crash or where you're sleeping, you're about waking up, you're in a church, you're on the road, you're in, the moment you just see Jesus come into my life, your life eternal begins right there and then. When you look at the book of John chapter 10 verse 10, what kind of life did Jesus come to give? Abundant life. That's what the Bible says. And we're going to, one day we're going to, maybe through one of the Sunday teachings, we're going to look at the meaning of that word, abundant life. And there are some words that we get through, I mean, around so uh, frequently and we don't understand the quality of those words anymore. So explain in your own words the quality or attributes of an abundant life. Life free of oppression. Life that is wholesome. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Use your own words. Okay? Life that is totally enjoying all God has to offer. Life that is full of victory. Put your own words. And when Jesus made man, he said, I give you what dominion. Abundant life is life in dominion. Number five, number six. Do you believe that God sent his son into the world to die for the sins of the world? Thereby giving us who believe eternal everlasting life. Do you believe that? Right? Yes, if you do. If you don't speak to me after the service, we can talk a little bit more. And I'm serious about that actually. Is it clear to you that eternal life is not only a length of time, but a quality and quantity of life? Now, do we all now understand that when we say abundant life, we're not just talking about forever and ever and ever and ever. But we're talking about from right now, the quality of life. Do we all understand that right now? Praise God. So put yes there. That means I've done a good job. So we have those scriptural verses that you're going to go home with. Okay? Okay? And then you see the answer keys there. But I want us to have our own answers before you go to the answer key. The purpose of God sending his son, you see the answer keys in all those verses. So say after me, I, and put your name there, Victor Adedokun, I have eternal life, I have everlasting life, I have abundant life. So I'm going to ask you, when do you have it? You have it right now, right? So let's go again, I, I. put your name right here, Victor Adedokun is mine, have everlasting life, have abundant life. 
have eternal life. And, and if I ask you, what is eternal life? A life free of oppression, free of affliction, God's kind of life. So when do you have it? You have it right now. When do you have it? When do you have it? May the Lord bless you. Let's get up on our feet and do a one-minute prayer before we take the offering and go tonight. What a blessed night. What a blessed night. If you have any question, write it down so that you don't forget. Um, we're going to take it next week. We're just going to wrap it up tonight. I just want you to just begin to speak to yourself right now. And there is, there is that beauty of just speaking to yourself and, and speaking to your life and say, I have life everlasting. It doesn't matter the limitations that I have right now. I have eternal life in Christ Jesus. Just begin to say those words to yourself right now. I have victory. I have increase. Um, uh, 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 my life is hid with Christ in God. Can you just go ahead and just say that? You got only one more minute. You better make the best use of it. Begin to declare, my body, you are, you are free from oppression. Uh, everything in me begin to respond to the life of God. And I yield myself to you completely, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. May I please request everyone, can you just lift up your hands and we make this confession together. Father, thank you for the life that you have given me. I believe in you and I receive the life that comes from only you right now. So I speak to myself and I declare anything and everything that goes on in this life that does not glorify Christ, I command you to stop right now. Everything that happens in my thought life, everything that happens in my spirit or my soul, everything that happens in my body, that does not glorify God, that does not reflect the abundant life that I have, I command right now that the power of God comes against you. I declare I'm free, free from oppression free from affliction, free from failure, free from, from sickness. I declare that my life is hid with Christ in God. So I rejoice that I have this life that is God's kind of life. If you believe it, shout amen and give God some praise. Amen. Sister Lisa, we're taking the offering. Do it for us. We are taking, we are accepting all offerings now. You can come to the front. <laughs> are you going to pray on the offering? Hallelujah. Father God, we just want to thank you for bringing us here this evening. Thank you for having us gather here in your in your eyes and in your in your sight, Father God. We want to continue to be a blessing. We want to continue to be of service to you. We want to continue to have you to go closer to you. We want to continue to be of service to you and to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Shall we just rise up and we'll sing together? I give you my life. I give you my trust.
Father, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to come together to learn at your feet. We want to pray, committing ourselves into your hands, that as we go from here, that you cause your mighty hand to rest upon us. We just want to pray that through us you will, you will show your life unto others around us. Amen. Use us as channels of blessings, as, as instruments in your hands to influence other lives positively. Lord, as we come back on, on Sunday just to worship you and to seek your face, we, we just want to ask, oh God, that you will cause our time of fellowship to be full of your presence. You will break every chain. You will restore hopes and dreams. You will renew every life. You will bring healing. And Lord, you will let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Father, for we know you've answered. Lift up your hands and I'm just going to pray from here. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May God be gracious unto you. Declare, declare this season that the Lord will cause the light of his countenance to be eternally bright upon you. And may the Lord God give you his peace. That peace that passes all human understanding. So after me, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Bible says, for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. You are more than an overcomer. God bless you. Tonight, we are celebrating Iki and Ife birthday. We did not get a chance to do it on the 2nd because we were at the summit. So, 